So in this video, we're going to solve a single variable linear equation that has integer coefficients. So just a couple of things to say. Single variable means that there's only one letter representing an unknown in the equation. So this time there is an X, even though the X occurs more than once, it's a single letter from the alphabet. So it's a single variable equation even though there's multiple occurrences of that variable, to be a two variable equation, I would need to have some other unknown like y or a three variable equation would have an, a third unknown quantity such as z. So single variable, there's only an x even though there's multiple occurrences of it. Um, the linear piece comes from the fact that the variable that we have is only raised to the first power. If any of the exponents on the x were anything other than a one, say this was squared or this were to the one half power, it would no longer be a linear equation. So that single variable is raised to the first power. That's what makes it linear. And we're talking about integer coefficients. And the coefficients are just the numbers that are showing up in the equation and they're integers, so all we need to remember when we see that word integer is that we're talking about the numbers zero, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and so on and so forth. So we aren't allowed things like the square root of two, or pi, or three halves. Those would not be integer numbers. So to solve this, in general, in, in my class in particular, I expect students to rewrite the problem. So if you just start working from what has been typed, you'll typically get marked down uh, 0.05 on an exam if a, if a problem is being scored out of one point. So you want to make sure that for your first step, you just go ahead and rewrite the problem in your own handwriting. That's step one for full credit on an exam. And there are several things that I could do from here that would be correct, but what I would usually do in this case is go ahead and take care of this right here. I would do the distribution. We have negative four times x plus one, a binomial in parentheses. So let's do that distribution first. So I'm gonna take the left-hand side and bring it down. I'm not going to do anything with it yet. And then I'm going to do negative four times x is negative 4x and I have a negative 4 times a plus 1 is a minus 4 and bring down the plus 9 and here I see that I have like terms neither of these have the variable x so I know how to add them so I'm just going to go ahead and do that so negative 4 plus 9 is plus 5 15 minus 2x and then when we're asked to solve for a variable, what we want to remember is that the goal is the goal is to get x equal to a number or a number equal to x. It doesn't matter which side you isolate the x on. So I need to get this x by itself. So one thing that I could do is I could look at look at the left hand side and say, hey, I'm going to decide to get x equals, which means this 15, which doesn't have which doesn't have an x, has to be dealt with. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 15 off. And if I do that on one side, I need to do it on the other. So I get 15 minus 15 is zero and zero minus two X is just minus two X, which I drop down. And then over here, I have a minus four X plus five minus 15 gives us a minus 10. And then I'm trying to get the X's over on the left-hand side. So here I have a negative four X so I'm going to add 4x to both sides because negative 4x plus 4x is 0. 0 minus 10 is a negative 10. And I get negative 2x plus 4x is 2x. And then here I can either, I have two x's, I only want a one. I want a coefficient of one on this x. So I can either divide by two because two divided by two is one and that would mean I would need to do it on both sides. Or I could think of this a little bit differently if I wanted to and this is another way to do it. That's frequently the better way to do it. 
So I could say here's a 2 or a 2 over 1. I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal 1 half. A half of 2 is 1, and that leaves me with 1x equals negative 10 times a half. Multiplying by a half is the same as dividing by 2. So a half of negative 10 is negative 5. And because there's only 1x, I can see there's 1x if I don't write the 1 in front of it. So you usually wouldn't write the 1. It's not wrong if you do. You just don't usually do that. So for, for my classes, usually I want to see these equal signs vertically aligned. And usually on an exam, if students decide to snake their equal signs down the page, I will mark down for that as being poor style. So that's something to be aware. And in the homework, when I'm giving you feedback, if you see me whooshing a red mark through your equal signs, that's telling you that on an exam, I would mark you down for that. So we're, we're technically done right here, but if I were in an exam setting, I would probably want to check my work to make sure that I didn't do this incorrectly. So I would take my negative 5 and pop it back into the original equation. So I'd go 15 minus 2 times x equals negative 4 times x plus 1 plus 9 and then everywhere there was an x before I would replace it with the negative 5 and then I would grind both sides out so I get my 15 negative 2 times negative 5 is plus 10 and here I get negative 4 times negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4 plus the 9 equals negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16 plus 9 and 15 plus 10 is 25 and 16 plus 9 is also 25 so here I have what I would call an identity the two sides are always equal and if you replace your solution back into your original equation and you generate an identity or a true statement something that is true then you know that you did this work correctly, most likely. Either that or you got lucky and got the right answer by accident.